everyone. I really appreciate this opportunity to share my research project. Uh, my name is Xin Rei. I'm a graduate student from University of Virginia. And today I'm going to talk about a female-specific chimeric RNA and its differential expression in a COVID patient. Here we go, I have nothing to this post. Okay, so most of you have already known that about the fusion genes, and this is one of the hallmarks for cancer. And traditionally, chimeric RNA is just the definition for the RNA product of the fusion gene, and that have been well studied in cancer and been used for cancer diagnosis and treatment. And in around 2008, our lab was among the first to find the new type of the chimeric RNAs, and they were found to be independent from the chromosome rearrangement, and they can be formed by alternative splicing, like the trans splicing between different trans groups or C splicing between adjacent genes. And the landscape of this new type of the chimeric RNAs have been well studied. However, in the past decade, people still argue that whether they are the transcription noise and can they be used as a clinical diagnosis. So we aim to find an extreme example of the chimeric RNA, either gender specific or tissue specific, so that we can uncover this layer of the transcriptome. So in today's talk, we will focus on a female specific chimeric RNA. And why we care about the gender? because males and females, they act very different in various disease because they have the different immune responses. And in general, females are more suspect to the autoimmune disease and the males usually have a worse outcome in various cancer and infectious disease. And in, recent, uh, in the recent pandemic, COVID-19, and we know that men have a higher risk of the death and severe symptoms of the COVID-19. And many groups have studied the different immune responses respond to COVID-19. And in general, male patients have a higher innate immune responses, while females have a more robust T cell response. And it is really important to notice what are the factors contributing to the sex differences. And the first is definitely sex hormones. And that have been well studied, they can regulate many different cytokines. And we also know about the sex chromosomes. And we know that one of the X chromosomes from the females will be inactivated. And they are a group of the immune genes have been reported to escape from the inact inactive X chromosome. And that will result in a better immune responses in female. However, for the immune cells transcriptome and immune cells epigenome were not largely studied. So today, by introducing a female-specific chimeric RNA, we really want to highlight the sex differential profile of the sex tra transcriptome. So in this study, we used the GTEx database, which is the database that includes the different tissue RNA sequencing sample from the healthy individuals. And then we identified seven thousands of the RNA sequencing data. And then we used the iris grip to identify the chimeric RNA. And then we compared the frequency between male and females. And we noticed that this chimeric RNA usually really stand out with a female-specific expression pattern. And I want to show that because this study has not been published yet, so I just used a simple letter U and C to represent for the gene name. Um, and this chimeric curry was also found just in the blood RNA sequencing data. So this is uh, gender specific and also tissue specific. And then we used a human whole blood sample to do the validation. And then we designed a primer at the predicted junction site. And by performing the PCR, we noticed that this chimeric curry was detected in all of the females here. And it is very interesting to notice that for both of the parental gene U and C, they normally express in both male and females, and they are not even specific to blood. So that indicates that this chimeric RNA may have a very independent function from the parental gene. And then we expand our validation panel, and we include 104 whole blood samples. And all of the females from there were detected with this chimeric RNA and not in male at all. And then we want to study what is the abnormal expression in a potential disease. So in a recent pandemic, we happened to have a collaboration with Tongji Hospital in China. So we analyzed the expression level of this chimeric RNA in a group of the COVID-19 patients. With the normal patients as a control, and we found that all of the normal females have this expression of the chimeric RNA, and all of the asymptomatic COVID patients, they also have this expression of the chimeric RNA. And it's very interesting to notice that with um, 
increasing severity of the symptoms, there is a large group of the females that lose this Camry current expression. And when we quantify the expression level, there was a dramatic decrease in the mild, severe, and critical patients. So what does it mean? So we want to study what is the potential function of this Camry current. Because this is a blood-specific Camry current, so we hypothesize that may have some um, blood development functions there. So we grouped the female patients, and the first thing we did is to look through the blood test. So we compared the neutral field counts and the lymphocytes counts between the different group of patients. So we grouped the female patients into UC positive for those who normally express this Camry carne, and then UC negative for those who lose this Camry carne. And we noticed that both male and UC negative females, they have a higher neutral field counts. However, there is no difference for the lymphocytes. And there are several publications have indicated that neutral field to lymphocytes ratio can as, act as an independent risk factor, and that will indicate some of the worst counts. So that is the marker for the prognosis of the COVID-19. We then look into this NLR ratio in our groups, and we notice that there is a dramatic increase for the patients who lose this chemical and they have a higher neutral field to lymphocytes ratio, and indicate that they may have some worse outcome by losing this chemical and then we try to study what is the function of this. So we firstly look into the different lineage of the blood differentiation. So we group them into the myeloid lineage, including the red blood cells and neutral fields. And then we also group them into the, lymphos, uh, the lymphoid lineage, including like the NK cells, T cells, and B cells. And then we compare the expression level of this Camry carne, and they are relatively higher in the red blood cells and CD11 B positive myeloid cells, and it is relatively lower in the group of the NK cells, T cells, and B cells. So we decided to perform the in vitro differentiation. So I used the CD34 hematopoietic stem cells, and then I expand the cells by treating with SCF B3 ligand, TPO, and L3. And then we do the transduction by using the SHRNA lentivirus targeting the junction size of this Camry RNA. And all of the successfully transduced cells were selected by the pure mesin. Uh, when I have the stable knockdown cell line, I initiated the myeloid differentiation by treating with the SCF, FLE3 ligand, L3, L6, and GMCSF. On the day five of the differentiation, I harvested cells, and the effect of knocking down specifically for this Camry RNA was confirmed by PCR. And then for the day five of the differentiated cells, we ran the flow cytometry to see what is the phenotype for the CD11B positive. And we noticed that compared to the SHGFP, we can see that the CD11B positive population really increased. You can even see the density of the population change. So that indicates that you see this Camry carne may act as a checkpoint inhibitor for the myeloid differentiation. And then there is another very important direction of our study is to figure out what is the potential mechanism for this Camry carry? How can this form? So we first used the clinic filter syndrome and Turner syndrome patients to confirm that this is from the inactive X chromosome. So you can notice that this Camry carry normally expressed in the XX females and not in the XY males, and they can be detected in the XXY clinic filter syndrome patients, but not in the Turner syndrome patients. And then we dived into the molecular mechanism and to see what is the molecular mechanism can make this happen on the inactive X chromosome. So based on our preliminary data, we know that these two parental genes are located on the X chromosome and they are the neighboring genes. So the transcriptional, sorry, the transcriptional read through happen when the parental gene C cannot stop at the poly A site, and that will transcript no read through into this downstream CDK16. And then we want to focus on what is the splicing even. So we hypothesize that there is a chromatin loop formed between the junction sites, and then that will bring the splicing sites together to make this happen on the inactive X chromosome. So I firstly look into the CTCF binding. CTCF is just an anchor protein for the chromatin loop. And we notice that in the female peripheral blood, there is a more 
uh, frequent CTCM binding at both of the junction sites. So this is where the junction site for U, and that is the junction site for C. And we think that this kind of higher level for the females, they were contributed by the inactive X chromosome. And then we want to visualize what does the chromatin loop look like. So we perform the chromosome confirmation capture, and that is the technology that we can cross-link the chromatin loop in the peripheral blood. And then we can calculate the chromatin interaction frequency after the digestion and ligation by PCR. So we compare to female PBMCs in red and male PBMCs in blue, and by using this green bar, which is one of the junction site as an anchor, we can see that there is a dramatic higher interaction frequency between the junction sites in female. So here is a schematic conclusion of this. Um, so the transcriptional read-through happened between the promoter of the UE1 and the promoter of the CDK16. And then there is an intergenic chromatin loop formed between the junction sites that can bring two splicing sites together. And this is very specific to the inactive X chromosome. And that will result in a specific expression for this chimeric RNA. So in conclusion, we discovered a female-specific chimeric RNA the first time, and it has only happened in blood. And that will act as a checkpoint inhibitor during the myeloid differentiation. And we did notice that there is an abnormal expression in COVID-19 patients. And we are going to look into more like the cancer patients or some of the anemia or the autoimmune disease patients and to see whether that may have the potential to be used as a bell marker. And then finally, we look into the molecular mechanism, and there is a different chromatin structure on the inactive X chromosome, and that will make the C splicing happen and produce a female-specific chimeric RNA. And with all of this, I would like to acknowledge our amazing lab, Dr. Huili Lab at the University of Virginia, and I want to thank for the whole team. And I also want to thank, doc, uh, thank Dr. Peng Wu from the Tongji Hospital University, and uh, we also want to thank all of the patients involved in the study. And I will take the questions at the end.